What's, What's poppin' boys? We are back with another Psychics video with Papa Berg. <laughs> Let's go. That just never gets over. <laughs> yes, sir. So let, let, let's, let's have a little plug in on, a little the, chat. Uh, on the side. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Let's fire the Twitch chat. Fire the chat. Press that. Oh, press that. Oh, press that. 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 Press yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not, not the elf. Like Christmas show. Like, like <laughs> Christmas, like, oh, Christmas we, we got a random performance one that okay. she just told us about today. All right. Pretty bad. So we'll get to that equation later. Oh, I someone just ripped it. So, if you look at pressure, okay? I don't like numbers that have the answer, but it's So this is what we were talking about yesterday. So, from a physics perspective versus a chemistry perspective, when you look at PV equals NRT, so to make this work, your pressure has to be in newtons per square meter, your volume has to be in cubic meters, so that way you get newton meters, otherwise known as joules. Which is why this has to be over here in moles, that R is in joules per mole Kelvin, multiply that by Kelvin, the Kelvins cancel out, the moles cancel out, you get joules on both sides, draw off the race. So, newtons per square meter, or is the same as Pascal's, okay? So it's named after Blaise Pascal, the, first, the French mathematician that actually came up with a lot of these quantities. So right now, you all are under one atmosphere of pressure, okay? So one atmosphere of pressure. So if you look on that yellow sheet, you see yonder yellow sheet, okay? So on yonder yellow sheet, you're over here on one atmosphere of pressure, you have 1.0 times 10 to the fifth newtons per square meter, which is 1.0 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So, newtons per square meter is the same thing as pascals. Now, what annoys me about this conversion, and this is what I don't like about this, this actually only has like two significant digits. Most of the time, when you actually have this conversion of one atmosphere, one atmosphere is in every, in any other situation, it's 101,300 newtons per square meter, okay, which is a much more precise measurement. So even though that sheet gives you... Oh, so change zero, of sheet is what you're saying. In reality, it's most of the time, every other actual science source, you'll use 101,300. Would you rather use that one? Or would you rather I'd rather use this one. Okay. If you didn't, that's fine. Okay, I'm not going to change any of my answers, but I will use that's it. Fine. I'd rather you go with this one just because that's most of the time how science is done. Now, this is one atmosphere, which is newtons per square meter, which is say as pascals. A lot of times you'll see it written as, as kilopascals. So 101,300 pascals is, is 101.3 kilopascals, okay? So this is how you see this written a lot as well, okay? Just because of the fact that it leaves you writing up the numbers. So it's kind of like the, the radio station. KPA, 101.3 on the FM time. Can we start a radio station as a class? Huh? Can we start a radio station as a class? Yeah, that's <laughs> what we should. We should. Sponsored by the May Solar Initiative. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sending out some groovy tunes to all you crazy dogs and cats. Okay. <laughs> they're all they're all song they're all songs about sunshine. <laughs> they all mention the okay. sun somewhere. <laughs> anyway, um, so with that said, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to. I'll, I'll just spend a lot of time talking about number nineteen in just a second. So, any questions on one through eighteen? <clears throat> Like what do you mean? Like if you're just looking at your data? Like does it take more temperature to affect a higher position or lower? Let me let me kind of rephrase your question. Okay? So let's say that you look at uh, aluminum, okay? So aluminum has a value of 24 times 10 to the negative 6. And these are these weird jacked up units times 10 to the negative 6 Celsius to the negative 1. 
And then if you go down here, then you get like uh, ice, okay? Which is 52 times 10 to the negative sixth, okay? Now, here's the difference. So, what this means is if you're comparing like an aluminum and ice, okay? So, ice actually, per degree, has a very, very big, relatively big value of thermal expansion. So this is why if you've ever seen like, if any of you have like at home in your, in your freezers, have like actual like ice trays where you pour in the water and then it freezes, and that ice is always like bigger than the water level that it was, because ice has a very big coefficient of expansion. So this is why if you ever live in cold environments, like, like your engines and your cars have water that they circulate around them. Ice has a huge value of thermal expansion. So if you don't add radiator fluid to your water, to your radiator, and it's just pure water, what happens is that your ice freezes. Then you have a huge expansion and it will literally crack your engine block because of the fact that it expands with such force. So this is why it's always important if you live in cold environments that you always check your radiator fluid to make sure that it has the proper amount of additive to it so that it doesn't freeze. So what this means is that let's say that you have, you have this equation that L equals L naught times one plus alpha delta T. So let's say that you have two pieces of the same length of aluminum and ice. Okay, now here's the beauty of this. This is L naught. So look at this mathematically. As L naught gets bigger, what's going to happen to the new length? So if L, as L naught gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's going to happen to the new value for L? It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you have a small piece of metal that you heat up, it's, that new length isn't going to change very, very much. Whereas, what's that, Mo? Uh, what'd you call him? Mo? Preston. Pub. Pub. Uh, okay. what'd, what'd you call him? What was his nickname? So, as your length gets thicker, imagine like a small piece of metal versus like, say for example, a bridge deck. Okay? So if you've got a bridge deck, which is really, really long, and that goes through a temperature change, that expansion is going to be pretty significant. Whereas if you just have a small piece of metal and it undergoes that same change in temperature, the new length won't change that much. So the bigger the length of the metal is, the more pronounced that becomes. So when you look at this part over here, so if you have the same change in temperature, as this coefficient of linear expansion becomes bigger, that's going to make a bigger length as well. So if you have aluminum and ice, that, and they undergo the same temperature change, the ice is going to have a much bigger coefficient of expansion than the aluminum is going to have, if you, if you have the same change in temperature and the same L naught. Now, let's talk about this question on, uh, by the way, you need that assignment. Does anybody else need this? Jason, you gave you yours. Okay, and you need, hold on. You need that as well. So when you get to uh, question number 12, iron is used to reinforce concrete and make it stronger. What do you notice about thermal expansions coefficient of concrete? So here's the deal. So if you've ever seen concrete being poured, so you've got your forms, right? And then a lot of times you see what's called rebar, which is laid in there as a mesh. Okay? So one of the great things that, and, and we, this randomly happened to us as a civilization, is that iron and concrete have the exact same thermal expansion rates. So this is what allows us to use iron in reinforcing concrete. Because if these expansion rates weren't the same, so imagine like what I did yesterday where I had like the two pieces of metal that, did, that had different expansion rates, and one completely curled over the top of the other one, if iron and metal didn't have, or excuse me, if concrete and iron didn't have the same thermal expansion rates, then 
you would all that would happen is you would just if you would you, you would just bust it apart. So like if the if the iron expanded more for the same temperature change than the concrete did, it'd pop it apart. Or if the concrete expanded more than the iron did, it would pull apart from the concrete. So one of the things that we got very, very, very lucky on, and it isn't like we had this plan, it was like, oh, let's just set concrete. And no, we just got very, very, very lucky that the expansion rates of concrete and iron are the same. If they were vastly different, we couldn't build the massive concrete structures that we do. Or at least we couldn't use iron to reinforce it. We'd have to have something else to reinforce it that had that same expansion joint. Okay? So we actually got lucky that that happened. It isn't like we planned it. Oh, yeah. Let's lay out our world. What do we need? Hmm. Checklist. Okay, we need water. We need a moon. We need tides. Oreos. Uh, we need concrete and iron to have the same expansion rate. No. Okay? We got lucky. Thank God we did, but it just basically just got lucky. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, your, uh, on 13 and 14, I don't care what you worked on, if you worked in square centimeters or if you worked in cubic meters or cubic centimeters, I don't care. Uh, but on 13, that change should start with a 1. And on 14, that change should start with a 3. Yes. And your element on 16 is something used to make up a coin that you might have in your pocket. Ice? No. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not, not ice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glass. 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 <laughs> Huh? I didn't hear what you said. Well, it's not, like, there's no coin that's necessarily made up of it. Like, not. It used, used to be. It used to be, but not anymore. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, I said, it's a possibility. Oh. <laughs> okay? That's why it's a Listen to my words. That's why it's Okay. Gold, gold coin. Yeah. Gold. Uh, I used to carry around. Oh shoot, that's not the right number. Why? Why? Okay. All right. On number eleven, make sure that you have two parts to your answer. I want two things. What's the final length of the temperature, and what will be the change in length in centimeters? So your answer to number eleven should have two parts: the final length, and then the change in length in centimeters. Okay. There should be two parts to that answer. All right, anybody, everybody cool on one through 18? Going once, going twice, so, okay. Now, does everybody have this purple sheet yes. for uh, AP equation sheet two? Does it? I'll take it. Private you want. Jason. For pressure? Oh, because it's in Pascal, it's not. I was over here like, well, it's not quite the same thing. No, they're a lot the same, but there's a lot of new stuff. Well. We already got them. Yeah. I, 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 I have one. So, I also have one. I have it. Andrew, I think. Well, that's to your right underneath the binder. Is that the same yeah. as this one? Huh? Oh, I'm going to check my book to make sure I don't put it in my book. Yes, it's the same thing. Purple ones are the same. Okay. Oh, oh. Stupid idiot. I had to make. You got a haircut. I did. The purple ones are the same and the yellow ones are the same. Oh. Okay, I can't reach that. I can. I got long arms. <laughs> Name right. Wear it out. All right, so let's chit chat about this equation. So it's it's rare that they ask anything on the actual AP exam, but this is a, it's a pretty cool equation in terms of what this is. So and it's also going to lead into a, a bigger discussion today. So when you look at Q, okay, and we're going to use Q for different things. Uh, it's lowercase q, it's going to represent charge. If it's uppercase q, it's going to represent thermal energy. Now, one of the things that you have to keep straight 
is the difference between temperature and the amount of heat energy that's in a system. They are two completely different things. They're related, but they're not the same. So here's the classic example. Let's say you walk into your house and, and you know, it's really cold outside today. It's barely above freezing. And for whatever reason, the, therm the, thermos, the, therm the furnace quit working in your house. Okay, you walk in, it's just like really, really cold. So one option is that you can take a single match and you can light that match. Okay? Assuming that you don't burn down the house, you're not going to warm your house with one match. However, if you put your hand directly above that single match, what's going to happen? They're going to burn your hand, right? So a single match isn't capable of warming up your entire house, but it's capable of burning your hand because that match is producing particles that have a very, very, very high temperature. Remember from yesterday, temperature is a reflection of the amount of kinetic energy in the particles. So basically what's happening is that match is kicking off particles that have this very, very, very high amount of thermal energy. Like, here's the ultimate anomaly. If you look at our atmosphere, the region of our atmosphere that has the highest temperatures is the outer layer of our atmosphere. So high, those have the highest temperatures. But ironically, you'll freeze to death out there. And here's the difference, because remember, temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy of the particles. So in the upper parts of our atmosphere, this is getting that direct energy from the sun. So it's getting these photons from the sun. They've got all this hitting the particles, and they're going, wow, OK, right? And they're like, this is cool. And so they're bouncing around, and so they have an extremely high amount of temperature, but there's just not very many of those particles. So the, the highest temperatures in our atmosphere are at the highest level. But you go, oh, that'll be the warmest. No, 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 you're going to freeze to death, but it's going to have the highest energy. So that's the difference between temperature and heat. So when your furnace does kick on, you can put your hands over the air coming out of the furnace, out of the grates in the floor, okay, or out of the air vents. It's not going to be extremely hot, but it's going to work by having a lot of thermal energy in that heat because of the fact that you're moving a lot of air that's a little bit warmer. So you don't have a high temperature, but you have a tremendous amount of thermal energy. So when you're looking at Q, Q is the sum total of all of this energy. So this Q is going to be in joules, okay? And we'll get more into this later. So you got joules, and then this is going to be in time. So you have joules per watts. second, otherwise known as? Watts. Watts. Oh, energy per unit of time, right? Oh, that's kind of cool. Now, let's look at the units of K. So if you look on page, whatever, on the bottom of that page, I, on the last problem, I'll tell you what page to look at. Page 385. 385. Okay. So what are the units for this conductivity? Why are there so many Ks? Huh? Why are there so many different You'll things see. that K stand for? Let's just look at the units. What, look at that. Somebody open up to page 385. What are the units for K? Watts per meter times Kelvin. What are they? Uh, watts per meter times Kelvin. Is that correct? Watts. Per meter. Watts per meter Kelvin. Per meter Kelvin? Kelvin or Kelvin. Yeah. All right. Okay. Like this? Three in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, I, we'll, get, we'll get to the values later. Okay? Now, you have an area which is going to be in meter squared. Square. You have a temperature which is going to be in Kelvin. Kelvin. And then down here, you're going to have a length which is going to be in meters. Meters. Okay? So if you look at what's going to happen, you're, this is in Kelvin, so you're going to cancel out the Kelvins, right? Then you're going to cancel out one of these. So you have watts, meters over here. Watts are the same as joules, joules per second times meters. So then you got another meter down here, which is going to cancel out that other one up there, and you get the same thing, which is joules per second. So both sides are going to be the same thing. So, because if they didn't work out, then it wouldn't, wouldn't matter. So, let's talk about your house, right? So it's cold day. What house? I got too much avocado toast. Huh? I got too much avocado toast. I ain't got a house. 
What? What? I'm eating too much avocado toast. I, don't have, I can't afford a house. Uh, oh, it's, it's clean. Yeah, yeah, it's you're making. It's all yeah, yeah, it's based off so articles. here's what I want to look at. So if you look on page three to five, let me see. or give me this. Find the value of k for. I think they. I think they should have a list of the concrete. Mm -hmm. What's the value of k for concrete? Zero point eight. Zero point eight, and then what it is it for like a uh, glass? I think they have glass in there. Oh, they have plate glass. Plate yeah, glass. Plate glass. 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75. And then what's like wood? 0. Uh, 0. 0.2. What? 0. 0.2. 0. 0.2. Okay. Uh, what's the other one they have on there? What's what's metal? Like steel or iron? Uh, iron. Steel is 14. Okay. Steel is 14. Okay. Now. So let's look at this. So let, what, here's where I want you to think through in terms of this equation. So what this is on this left side is how much energy is going to be radiated per unit of time. Now, here's the deal. If you want to look at a well-insulated house, okay, you always have, like for example, on stress down cold days like today, you have a temperature gradient. So let's say that Ma and Pa Kettle like their house warm, so they have like, the inside temperature of, let's say, 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? So on the inside of the house is 20 degrees Celsius, which is about what it is here. This is about 74. Okay? Now, on the outside of the temperature, like outside now, it's about freezing. So that's about 0 degrees Celsius. So you have a temperature gradient across between 20 degrees and 0 degrees. So which direction is the energy going to flow? From inside the house out or from the outside in? Inside out. Inside out. Inside out, inside out right? So what's the purpose beyond just keeping the weather out? The purpose of the wall is to regulate that temperature flow. Now, it's cold outside. Why do you all wear jackets? What are you trying to prevent? Prevents from losing your body. Yes, you're trying to minimize the amount of energy, thermal energy per unit of time that is radiating out from your arms or torso, whatever. Okay? I'm producing power? You lose an energy per unit of time. Which is power. Where's the power pool? So in other words, all we, so in other words to solve the energy crisis. We're all in the matrix. I'm we're all in the matrix. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, we have to we're, all batteries. <laughs> we're all powering the machine. We're all batteries. <laughs> well, you're, Plug well, me you're in. We're actually all little furnaces that are burning energy and Plug giving off heat. Okay, and that's what we all want. Just harvest a couple of bodies, solve the energy crisis. And we're um, only about 25% efficient. So that means is if you consume like 100 calories, out of that 100 calories, you can only functionally use about 25 of them, okay? Because a lot of them are just burned off as excess heat. So the same, th same thing is true of your car. So when you buy like 100 joules of energy in forms of gasoline, you're only going to functionally be able to use about 25 joules of that because of the fact that you, lo you lose so much of it just to radiant heat. Okay, so here's what I want to look at. So, let's leave K out of this for now. So, as the area of the wall is going to get bigger, okay, you have a bigger surface area, what do you think is going to happen to the radiant heat loss for a year of time? Get bigger. It's going to get bigger. So the more surface area that you have, the bigger this is going to get. What about your temperature gradient? As your temperature gradient gets bigger, what's going to happen to your heat loss? Bigger. It's going to get bigger. Because look, what if there is no temperature gradient? What if the inside temperature of your house is 20 degrees and the outside temperature is 20 degrees? No. no. Yeah, there, there's nothing to be gained, right? So the bigger this temperature gradient is, the faster your rate of heat loss. Now, L is going to be the thickness of the, the, the wall. So as you build a thicker wall, what's going to happen to this value over here? Lower. It's going to be lower. So if you want to minimize this, okay, if you want to minimize this, you want a small value of k, so in other words, this value of k is how much is a reflection of how well it radiates energy across the surface. So notice that wood and concrete, okay, the wood especially is 0.2, 
So wood has actually a very, very low thermal conductivity. So wood prevents the transfer of energy. Notice that glass and steel basically have about the same thing of around 0.8. Excuse me, glass and concrete have 0.8. Now, notice that steel is 14. So are there times where you want a material to conduct heat very rapidly? Yes. yes. What's one situation? Frying pan. Frying pan, exactly. Okay. If you have a frying pan, you're going to put it on the stove. You want that energy to get transferred through very quickly, okay? Because that's what's going to happen. So in certain situations, you want a good conductivity. There are other times that you don't. Now, what's the conductivity for air? I think they have that listed. 0.026. Yeah, air is very, very low. It's 0.026. So this is why what it, when you all become homeowners, they'll say, oh, it's triple pane glass. Triple pane glass means that you have a barrier of air in between these. So if you put air in between them, notice that you go from a conductivity of glass of like 0.75 down to like 0.02. So dead air space is a very, very good method why to prevent the transfer windows? of thermal energy. So <laughs> this is why like, if you, if, like a lot of times you have like a down jacket, okay, if they're big and fluffy, why? There's air air pockets. Pockets. Ah, there's air pockets in there, air, right? There's air molecules. Did you seriously say air molecules? <laughs> air molecules. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. So now, when you all become homeowners, okay? Right now, you're going to say homeless. homeless. No? I, I keep thinking you're going to say homeless. homeless. No, no, no. Homeless. When you all become homeless. <laughs> okay. When you all stop eating so avocados. Or, or even when you all start paying your own, like, electricity bills, okay, your natural gas bills. Let's say you have two options for your house. Hey, one option is that you keep it, like, at 70 degrees and zero degrees outside, right? Okay? Now, the other option is that you keep it like, say, 65 degrees. So, as you lower the temperature inside the house relative to the outside temperature, what's going to happen to that value of Q? It's going to become smaller. So, this becomes a, a losing fight in terms of energy costs. So, the warmer that you want to keep your house relative to an outside temperature, the bigger that temperature gradient is, the more energy that you're going to lose. So number one, you're trying to keep that house warmer. Number two, with a bigger temperature gradient, you're going to increase that flow of energy across that wall. So, but if you lower the temperature, oh, the furnace doesn't have to work as hard. You have a slower, you have a lower temperature gradient. You're going to decrease that flow of energy across that system. Now, let's say it's it's uh, summer. When do you think you're going to have a bigger potential temperature gradient? During the summer or during the winter? Winter. Winter. Yeah, definitely during the winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because, okay, let's say you keep your house at 72 degrees. On a really, really, really hot day, it might get 102, okay? So you're going, you have a temperature gradient of 72 to 32, right? So you have like a, you have 72 to 102, so you have like a 30 degree temperature gradient. Whereas if you keep it at 72 Fahrenheit, okay, and it's like, zero degrees outside Fahrenheit, okay, then you have a 72 degree temperature gradient. So you're much more likely to have a big temperature gradient in the summer, excuse me, in the winter, than you are in the summer. So this is why, again, you go, oh, I like, I like it really cold in the winter time, or in the summer time. Well, if you keep it really, really cold in the summer inside your house, and again, you're going to increase that temperature gradient, bad things are going to happen in terms of your electrical. Now, if you're good with that, hey, that's fine. But, so, I'm just telling you, if once you become homeowners, not homeless, okay, <laughs> homeowners, guarantee you, you're going to pay attention to what the, what the temperature is inside that house. Because, believe me, it's much more efficient to put on an extra sweater than it is to try and raise that temperature of the house and increase that temperature gradient across it. Because most people don't understand that equation. But if you increase that temperature gradient, you're going to have more and more heat. So basically, if you want, if you want to minimize your heat loss, you're going to have thick walls. Walls are really thick. Small walls. 
and you can have a small temperature really relief. Okay? They're really small thick house. <laughs> They're very small thick house. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can huff and puff and try and blow the house. Yeah, that's exactly. Okay. So if you look at what I'm asking for on 19, so you got a concrete wall, it's 20 centimeters thick, you can replace with the wood wall of the exact same area. What will be the thickness of the wood wall so that the same rate of heat transfer occurs for a given temperature difference? Mm. Okay? So here's the deal. So if you look at concrete, concrete is 0.8, wood is 0.2, right? So which one's going to be better at preventing heat loss? Wood or concrete? Wood. Wood. So you got a concrete wall that is 20 centimeters thick. And concrete, it's okay in terms of radiant heat loss, but not all that good. So here's my question. We get the same value of Q over T. Okay, this is where I want this to be the same. So I'm going to have the same area. So, that, so here's how you can do this problem. You got Q over T, thermal energy per unit of time. So this is going to be K of the wood and then K of concrete. And then you're going to have the area, the area, delta T, delta T, L, and L. So concrete is 0.8, wood is 0.2. So since the areas are going to be the same, do we have to worry about that? No. 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 If you're really picky, you, oh, I like numbers. We'll put in a number of one. OK, whatever. What about your temperature gradient? It's going to be the same. It's going to be the same, right? So the thickness of the, is the, the concrete wall is 20 centimeters? Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK, so this is going to be 20 centimeters. So I want this to be the same. So here's the question. How can you figure out the thickness of the wood? Now think this through. Is your wood going to be thicker or thinner than your concrete wall? Thinner. thinner. It's going to be thinner. So if you get an answer bigger than 20, you've done messed up. You've done messed up. Or you could look at this and go, oh, if I take 0.8 divided by 0.2, I get, well, what's 8 divided by 2? Four. Four. Yeah. So there might be a four involved somehow. Oh, maybe. In terms of like a multiplicative factor, not as an answer, but as part well, of that ratio. So. Or, I'm just saying. Or you can cross multiply. Okay. okay. Cool with this. So ironically, this drop this equation drives your heating bills. And that's where a vast, a lot, a lot of what a large amount of money is going to go to is paying gas bills and electric bills to heat and cool your house. But very few people understand this equation. So, what? So not if you're homeless. Yeah, <laughs> if you're homeless. Well, but it does. Because, because that's you right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. Because that's, you. Oh, yeah, that's you. It, it was cold. Do you want a single layer cardboard box or that double? <laughs> <laughs> you want that double layer cardboard box? <laughs> Give me that double layer cardboard. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm really treat myself this year. But I'm not gonna treat yourself. Treat yourself. Get yourself.